everybody. I'm Zinat Islam, Relations Manager, Academia Network at UNICE Center. A very warm welcome to all those joining us today. It is the 20th, 26th session of our YSBC web lecture series uh, on the topic of enabling the next generation of social business entrepreneurs. Uh, the speaker today is Mr. Shazib M. Khairul Islam, Founder and Managing Director at the YY Ventures. And our moderator today is Mr. Bastian Muller, Senior Expert Impact Finance, Siemens Foundation. Uh, something about our speaker today, uh, Mr. Shazib Khairul Islam is an Obama scholar at Columbia University in the US and is the founder of YY Ventures, a social business company that invests in social businesses that are creating a world of three zeros, zero poverty, zero unemployment, and zero carbon emissions. Before founding YY Venture, Shazib led the establishment of Bangladesh's first independent social business incubator, YY Goshti, which has backed 50 plus social entrepreneurs since 2016, who have impacted the lives of more than 100,000 people. Shazim maintains many other roles and you, you, you will hear about it in today's conversation. Now something about our moderator today, Bastian is currently leading the impact finance practice at Siemens Foundation. He has over 10 years of experience in international development, social entrepreneurship and in Impact investment in impact investing. In his current role, he's developing new financing instruments for early stage social enterprises in emerging economies. Prior to this role, Bastian served as director of investor relations at Unis Social Business (YSB), a social venture fund co-founded by Professor Mohammad Yunus. At YSB, he worked on innovative financing vehicles such as pay for success models and was able to connect with a wide range of institutional and private investors. So today's topic is super interesting and I think it will be really appealing to all those watching, to the young and promising entrepreneurs. So please do join us and um, stay for this whole conversation. So let's start and with that we welcome Professor Mohammad Yunus for his uh, opening remarks. Professor Yunus. Thank you very much. Good to hear you. Uh, we're delighted that we could bring uh, both uh, Bastian and Sajib together today. This is very special. This is special because uh, uh, we have two young people together talking to each other and uh, kind of exploring was the backdrop, uh, the back background of all the things they have been doing. Uh, this is very significant because they all both of them have uh, lots of commonalities, so they understand each other's uh, issues very clearly. Uh, Shazib started with the uh, ideas of uh, doing things uh, for changing the world uh, when he, he was still a student. So he got <coughs> introduced to the idea of social business, and his first uh, challenge was, as he was telling us, that whether he should become a professor of uh, one of the leading universities in Bangladesh, or he should start his own business. So it, <clears throat> many of his friends didn't like the idea that he should start a business rather than uh, join a university as a professor. But he chose that. And that's the path he took and continued as an entrepreneur. He became an entrepreneur. Uh, step by step, he created, uh, as uh, Zinat was mentioning, more than 50 uh, social business companies. What, what a record uh, in less than 10 years. It's, uh, uh, just coming out of the school. So he's not only an uh, entrepreneur and doing that, uh, he's spreading the news uh, with his talent and creativity and organizing events. And he's very good at organizing events, not only events that we organize in Bangladesh, but also international events. Uh, his companies are involved in creating uh, events in Europe and other places. He's hired by companies who uh, need his assistance in Europe and other countries uh, beyond uh, Bangladesh. So this is something that he created himself and continued to expand his idea of how to create a world of three zeros. That's what his, his guiding uh, principle is all about. So today we'll hear how his journey began, what happened. And Bastian is the right person to ask the question. And uh, he has the right backdrop. He started with uh, inspired by microfinance. And then uh, he's let, he pushed himself into the world of uh, social business and joined uh, UNIS Social Business uh, to create more social businesses in several countries. Now he has a bigger job 
in Siemens Foundation and expanding this idea of social business through this uh, Siemens Foundation. And he will probably can mention some of it during the discussions, the commonality between uh, Bastian and Sajid. So today we are lucky to have both of them together, very powerful two young people. And already uh, Shazib has been selected in a global selection process to become the Obama scholar. So we are very happy to have him uh, uh, as, as recognized as a, by the Obama scholarship. So that's a very distinguishing feature for young people globally. So today we are uh, waiting to hear from uh, uh, both of them. Bastian, now the floor is yours. Please take it over from here. Thank you very much, uh, Zainab, for the introduction. And thank you very much, Professor Yunus, um, for providing the background. And uh, as you very nicely said, uh, there are actually a lot of commonalities. Uh, when I read uh, Shazib's background, I felt like this sounds like someone who, who had to take similar life decisions than I had <laughs> to do. Uh, so it feels like uh, like someone who went through uh, certain experiences on the other side of the planet that I also did. So it's really great to connect with you, Shazib. Um, but uh, before I talk more about um, where we are connecting and, and uh, what have you been doing um, and also what your advice would be for people that also want to enter this field, maybe you can say a little bit in, in your words, like what were your first touch points with the world of social business and how did you actually get involved? Like what, what were the defining moments and how did you get introduced to this world? Because, you know, typically uh, there is someone who tells you something or you get interested about it. So what was your, what was your journey to enter this universe, which is getting bigger and bigger by the day? Um, thank you so much, Bastian, and also thank you so much, Professor Yunus. You were very kind um, with your words. Um, and it's an honor to be here at the YSPC Web Lecture Series. Um, so Professor Yunus kind of um, already said it. I was 22 years old and I was studying at the University of Dhaka, um, international business. My life's goal was to become a lecturer because this was the dream of my family. And I grew up in rural Bangladesh with my mother and sister while my father worked abroad in many countries and everything that I was asked for is Shazib, you have to be the top student. So that was my everything. Like in my high school, secondary school, I did eight semesters um, in the university, in the bachelor's program. I was always a top student because I wanted to make my family happy. And then one fine evening, I live in Mirpur, which is very close to Grameen Bank. Every day, if I'm going to my school or university, I would see Professor Yunus's picture like this, happy face, smiling. But I, I didn't really um, ask much or I didn't really want to know about this. Of course, I was super happy when he won the Nobel Prize. We saw it in the news. But when I was in my eighth semester, a friend of mine said, um, there is a conference called Social Business Day uh, happening at Radisson. Would you like to join? And then one of them actually also paid for it. I think we had a discount coupon. This was the first time when I went to Uno Center to buy the ticket. I went there, big conference, maybe more than a thousand people. Um, I didn't see so many people in the conference hall before. But once I came home, what I really came home with is um, two particular sentences. I think Professor Uno said them during the closing. Um, I, I don't know if I can recall exactly what he said, but he said our generation of young people was the most powerful generation because we had the power of technology. And then he also said something that we need to become job creators. We should not be job seekers. So this is something that sparked, okay, what is social business? How do I learn more about it? And then I made a Facebook post because I was also interested in community organizing. Facebook is very big now, but Nine years ago, it was not that big, but I still made a post that, hey guys, I would like to learn about social business. Would you like to join me if I want to invite a speaker, right? And also it took four months um, to, to find somebody at Unus Center um, to come and give a lecture on social business. And then they gave me one condition. They said, you need to find 20 people, then this is, then this is something and we will come and speak, you know? But guess what? There were 147 people who signed up and everybody paid five euros for their lunch. And also this really 
inspired me to start something. So I created a youth alliance for social business, which we ran for a few years. You no, know, uh, the mission was to go to all universities in Bangladesh. I remember in 18 months, we have been to 47 universities with friends from UNO Center and many successful social business companies. Because I thought since I didn't know much about the concept, there were many like me who didn't know about it. And I thought they should at least know about it or at least have the chance to learn about this great concept of social business. Yeah, so that was the beginning in 2013. Wow, that so you basically went from being slightly curious uh, to going all in and uh, trying to uh, pull a lot of other universities also. So uh, you, you seem to have been very convinced uh, by the conference and uh, by Professor Yunus' inspirational speeches. So uh, I, I'm curious, like when you then started this uh, youth clubs and these uh, community initiatives around social business, like what were people mostly asking about or what were like the questions that they had or what are some of the things that, that people like are really curious about when they're asking about social business and um, like, how did you explain it? Yeah. So, you know, I'll be, I'll be very, very frank with you. So the, the community where I grew up with, for example, um, it's a bit strange. I don't know if people would believe this. When I was living in the village, we didn't have electricity or like access to clean water at home. And then later on, I realized, oh, in the village market, I saw something called Grameen Phone. There was this small sticker. You can basically come and call people. There was um, Grameen Shokti. And later on, I actually went to all these managing directors and inquired them. Like in our village, even now, there is no been... Um, equity program. So I once spoke to one of my colleagues at Grameen Trust. Oh, in Baganbari, I saw the center. There are people who get benefits. So these were there, but for young people, I thought they need to at least find an option. There are two reasons for this. So at least in, in my society, people did not really encourage entrepreneurship. And they always ask you to take the safe side. In one hand, I had wonderful, wonderful faculty members at campus who loved me, um, who gave me wonderful skills. Many of them said, oh, you should go to this corporate or investment banking, um, things like that. But, but I thought social business uh, was a different thing because this has one cause. And then this also gives us an opportunity to do something. Can I actually create a job for myself and maybe create a job for somebody else too? So when we were going to all these universities, um, people would come up with their ideas. Oh, I am a photographer. I would like to start a social business around photography. I'm like, okay, how do you actually start a social business around this? Somebody was like, yeah, I have friends who produces no Um, How can we sell them? And no, I, we had no knowledge um, on, these, on these skills, but we still tried to bring in more people and give young people the chance to at least you know, come up with a social business concept, like doing very basic uh, business model canvas or doing uh, small little competitions, you know, those kind of things that I did um, in 2013 and 14. I didn't know that, that that would really help me now in 2021 uh, to take this in a bigger step. So there was a hunger to learn about it. And then it gives our young people an option. You know, there is an alternative path that you can choose to create your own employment and also do something good for the, for the society. And I, I truly think our young people think this way because we generally grew up in difficult conditions and then we are all fighters, entrepreneurial. So we always have like small little solutions that we can come up with. But these were some of those inspirations that I had, and this is what I read by running all these small workshops. Great, cool. And I mean, it's, it's uh, very brave, uh, as you said, because uh, very often you write people advise you to take the safe path, you know, go to a company with a big brand name and <laughs> these kind of things. Um, uh, but uh, you can move and shake uh, much more. Uh, if you create your own universe, um, but as you have said, if you said yourself in the beginning, you tried to be the best student, 
to please your parents. So now imagine uh, all those people that you told you sh they should become entrepreneurs and they went home to their parents and said, I'm not going to get a job. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm sure there were a lot of happy conversations at home. Um, mm -hmm. But as you described, uh, this movement was growing and you had a lot of universities at some point. Um, like uh, it must have been a lot of work. Um, like how did, did you manage to get people involved? Like did you set up a team? Did you try to put structure, structures in place to, to keep this initiative basically growing and it doesn't all fall on your shoulders? Yeah, of course. So um, it's community volunteerism, you know? So every university we would go, we would ask people, can you come up with 10 people? So we had this association called Social Business Youth Alliance. So we said, oh, we, can, we create an SBY at Dhaka University Wing. I think we had 25 plus chapters. Um, everybody was volunteering. We had no, not much of project management tools or things that we use now. We didn't know about them. So it was basically Facebook messengers, phone calls. And every Saturday, I would organize a small meeting at TSC, Teachers and Student Center at my campus, bring in small snacks for people. And then we would just talk, you know, what do we do in two weeks? And then we would probably find somebody who's a designer who can produce a creative banner, things like that. But actually putting things into perspective. And so this was a time when I was also teaching at a private university in Bangladesh. I traveled to Berlin. Um, and before that, I traveled to One Young World. And then when I went to One Young World, I saw 15,000 people sorry, 1,500 people doing amazing things, I really ask myself, okay, how do I be more impactful? You know, how can I create literally jobs, you know, maybe create employment for myself, for others? So among those volunteers with three people, um, I started our first business, YY Goshti. We were, we were supported by EMK Center and MK RFI. I, I always pray for him because he believed in my two-page concept note. <laughs> And then he said, yeah, sure, I'll support you, give you space, and then you can start. So this is the time when we really created a team of three staff members and many volunteers and, of course, supporters. I'm truly indebted to the world and community because I think everybody loves us and always supported us with skills, knowledge, connections. So, yeah, 2016 beginning was when we had a team, but many volunteers and supporters Cool. And I think what's very interesting when you now describe, when you were describing your journey, it's, I mean, things that are now very big or like a big communities and big initiatives, they can start as little as with a Facebook post, a, right. a WhatsApp group, like uh, one group of 10 or 20 people coming together, like some, because sometimes I feel that people are a little bit afraid of jumping into you know the social business or the entrepreneurship world because it it sound it seems like there's so many challenges ahead of you but like things are starting really really small and then when there is interest and power and traction around it it will grow and uh, you won't be alone in your journey anymore and that's also very important uh, to realize because um, you can't move mountains by yourself but if you're really tackling the right problem and if you're giving people the sense of I can uh, have a purpose here and uh, I can really like apply my creativity to solve a problem and it will also create jobs like it, things will fall into place like you don't need to have everything figured out you said you had a two two page concept note you don't need to have everything figured out from the beginning like it will it will come by. So getting started is probably the most important thing and it can start very small. But we're going to cover a lot of topics today. So I want to take a little bit of a step back. So we're going to, we talked about uh, like how you got started now. Uh, as Professor Yunus has mentioned in the beginning, you are also an Obama um, scholar. Um, you're also involved with YI Ventures. Um, you're also involved with the Three Zero Club. So there's a lot of things we, we still have to talk about, but um, maybe making the jump now a little bit 
uh, from like uh, your time where you started all these initiatives to becoming an Obama scholar that's like, how did that happen? Like, it sounds like something <laughs> pretty random. You were very busy, like with starting all these things in Bangladesh. Like, how did you hear about it? And, and actually what is an Obama scholar? And, and how can other people become an Obama scholar? Yeah, in, in, interesting. So, so since I was a very serious student and even today I have a heart of an uh, academician and I like going back to the university to learn or even to teach. So since 2018, I wanted to do a second master's and then I was already enrolled in a university in UK. Again, another beautiful thing during Social Business Day in Bangkok. So I was talking to my good friend, Christian, who is founded Make Sense. He said, Shazib, you, I know this university is great, but you should also explore the Obama uh, Scholars Program. I'm like, once I looked at all this profile of 11 people that were studying in Columbia University, I'm saying, you guys are all so successful, have achieved so much. <laughs> I'm not going to get in, but then I chose to make an application um, but I was also applying at other universities because I had made up my mind that by the time I turned 30, I should do my second master's. But luckily, I got into this Obama Scholars Program. It's, uh, so due to the pandemic, I had to do this program online, but a uh, changing journey. So it's a year-long leadership program uh, that brings in you know, entrepreneurs, um, there is no specific field. You can be a journalist, you can be a politician, you can be an entrepreneur. They give you skill and network that you can take your local impact to a global level. And the process is very competitive. Um, I don't know, maybe many thousand people apply. And then finally, after a rigorous, I think four rounds, they chose only uh, 11 scholars for our cohort. But in this cohort this year, uh, the program is also open in Chicago and also in Colombia. I think they chose 22 people. Um, but it's very interesting. For example, I try to learn more about impact investing because my mission is to now set up an impact social business fund. And then, but I also learned acting, which you don't expect. I learned about regenerative agriculture, um, sustainable development conflict um, resolution, negotiation. And then this also gives you a network. And then this really helps me with, um, with my current work, with a lot of research, um, experience, um, sharing introductions. And I, I really recommend um, if somebody wants to take his or her, you know, uh, local impact to a global level, and then if they want to bring in like a systems change perspective into their business, they should really apply for this program. Um, ideally, it's one year. You get to stay in, in New York and study at Columbia and also really network with um, high-level um, politician ministers, people who are really big in, in journalism, democracy, even education. Yeah, so highly recommend this. Great. So it basically, it, it's kind of, it sounds like a jumping board or like... Uh, a rocket launching pad for something that you already started like in your country or locally and now you really want to big it on on like a bigger bigger scale and they expose you to a great community of amazing people uh, i can only imagine like the uh, like what such interesting personalities you've met like can you can you maybe just give us like one or two anecdotes like of highlights but what were really like interesting conversations or just maybe funny moments that really stuck with you when you now remember back to the program that that you <laughs> that you like to tell. Yeah, so as also Professor Yunus said, so I travel often um, to Germany, <laughs> your country, and then this is when I I met a lot of my friends in Wiesbaden, and many of them really inspired me on sustainable living, sustainable agriculture. So I really wanted to learn about it, you know. So I chose a course um, on food systems. Really something, somebody who studied science or, you know, maybe they would do it. So I'm a business student. So I had no knowledge. Still, I went for it. But this was the first time when I questioned myself if I'm cooking chicken biryani or eating this as a meal in my dinner table. How do I ask myself what happens, you know, how these ingredients comes to my table? 
and how this goes out, right? So this was one of those moments that you become, become eager to learn. But one of the most funny things was when we did this acting bootcamp, you know, you really become an actor for some time. And my coaches, um, they, they were superb. They really helped me to, to really find my story. And some of them has worked in Hollywood movies and we would do little acting from, you know, becoming a villain. Uh, but this is when you were leading a company, you are not always in a comfort zone. So how do you, you know, navigate this situation and deal with all these different perspectives? You know, and then also, like, let's say, if we are going for a business development meeting, how do I need to start talking? How do I act? And also for my work, I have to really deal with, you know, people from diverse cultures and everybody says hello differently, but there are small little ticks, tricks, you know, that, that really helps you to cope up with those situations. This is interesting. And I think the, the wow moment was when we met President Obama. I heard him um, and saw him face to face in 2015 in a conference in Nairobi, but in this, um, session. So they say, our programs team said, if you have a particular question for President Obama, you can ask him. And then I was so nervous for this whole night, I could not come up with the question. So in the morning, I sent uh, in the team's chat of my colleagues at YY Ventures, I'm like, guys, if you were given a chance to ask a question to President Obama, what did you ask him? You know, so they came up with many different questions. So then we, we asked him and then he answered I'm sure there were many dozens of questions. He answered two or three questions. He also answered my one. And, you know, he really gave small little examples of how giving like 1,000 um, euros as microcredit to build a cattle rearing firm can really create jobs and change lives. And it felt like he really knew about Bangladesh. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure he knows a lot about his friends with Pro Professor Yunus, met Professor Yunus and knows microfinance and social business. But when I thought that he really knows about our village, I was super surprised. I'm like, how come you're the former president of US, you have a lot of knowledge about our village. You know, these kind of things really inspired me. Great. It, it really sounds like an amazing program. So, um, yeah, I look it up also myself <laughs> once I have a little bit more of free time uh, and uh, maybe uh, people can reach out to you afterwards if they have questions about the program. Um, I, I think you mentioned one very important thing also, like when you couldn't come up uh, with a question, like when you, when you build a community around you and when you have a good network, um, like you're not alone anymore and you don't have to solve problems alone. Um, it's always just great to be able to bounce some ideas back and forth, like, or just to be able like to, to tap into a network of great people and to ask and like when you have challenging situations in life. And of course this was like, like uh, coming up with a question for like one of the coolest presidents ever. <laughs> Uh, is, is of course a big thing like uh, having a network around you it's very important to use it because they can they can help you a lot like you're not left alone with your problems anymore you have people to um to rely on but maybe now taking also taking it now back to your um current work so i understand you're you're basically um are involved also with venture financing. So uh, YY Ventures is one of the, I don't know like how much time you have during the day. You seem to do like five different jobs. So my, my day only has 24 hours, <laughs> but you, you seem to be like uh, running uh, three different companies. Um, so there I understand it's basically running uh, a little bit the model of uh, a classical venture fund. And then uh, feel free to correct me afterwards where you pick like, very, very young and promising companies um, with like good ideas and you support them at a very early stage, of course, with uh, capital, but also, as you said, like the, you need a lot of advice, you need a network, you need guidance. So tell us a little bit like what Viva Ventures is, what, what, does, it, uh, what it, does it do and um, what are your plans also for the future? All right. Thanks so much. And um, I think you really asked the right question in the right way. Um, so as you talked about, you know, asking for help. So 
one of the things that I learned throughout my journey, um, small journey of entrepreneurship is as entrepreneurs, we really need to ask for help. You know, if we share our ideas and concerns, we will definitely find somebody who will help us. So at YY Ventures, we, we run incubation programs like in the first five years, we reached to 50 entrepreneurs. And just in last one year, within the pandemic, we reached to 55. So now we are trying to scale our operations. So what we do is we, um, we seek for ideas um, around social innovation, social change, and social business. And we give them a six month long program, 10 entrepreneurs in each cycle. And we help them with training, um, support services, business support services, like building uh, websites, legal, um, accounting help. We tell them, you take care of the big job and we will support you by doing the rest, you know? Um, and then occasionally we also provide funding. We were not active into the funding space, but um, during my Obama Scholars program, I was completely away from work thanks to my team that they took the company forward. So now we have started to put in really small amount of money, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 um, um, dollars um, as seed funding. And then the second thing that we do is we thought our community needed a space to meet. And, tr and, and trust me, as I say this, I am not someone who comes up with nice, innovative or crazy ideas. I, I'm, I'm never good at this, but what I've, I've done always is when somebody came to me and thought of something, I thought maybe I can help. So one fine afternoon, um, three years ago, we had a small little office Two young guys came to our office and said, oh, your office looks nice. There was guitar, some colors, lights. Can we come and work here? We would be paying for you. It was the same time when Professor Yunus also inspired me to create a community space for our entrepreneurs. So we decided to launch Impact Hub in Bangladesh. Um, we are also now one of, we launched it one week before the pandemic. We even expanded. So this also houses now 60 plus entrepreneurs, seven offices. So it's one community that solves problems together. And then finally, what we are now trying to do is um, set up our own ventures. One such venture is we call it YY Studio. So we have a team of 15 designers um, and developers. We promote um, socially conscious entrepreneurs or social businesses to take their impact agenda forward. Because what we thought our friends say, I'm sure you know Hans, right? Who co co-founded um, Grameen Creative Lab. So he came to one of our conference in Dhaka and then he was asking me, oh, your design looks really nice. Who did it? How did you hire an agency? I said, Hans, I didn't hire an agency. We are all volunteering for this conference. And then he said, would you like to come to Paris and work with us? You know, then I went to our chairperson, Ms. Lamia Moshe, whom you also know very well. And I said, people are asking uh, for this kind of help. What should I do? She said, why not? So we are now also setting up these businesses, which we will also uh, grow. And one thing that you ask is, um, because I wear multiple hats, but I think I have a wonderful, wonderful team who takes this work forward. So for each team, we have somebody who's head of something. So particularly responsible and everybody is entrepreneurial. So at our work, we call ourselves weavers, entrepreneurs and investors. Why we are weavers? Because we want to connect all these small little dots, like creating a nokshikata that we can bring in people together at Impact Up as they can create something. And we are entrepreneurs because we are now 25 people at the company. So everybody is entrepreneurial. This is the seed that I want to give to them that maybe someday you'll lead with your own social businesses or do something else. But at YY Ventures, you have to take this challenge of taking a program uh, forward in a sustainable way. And we are also investors. It's not just because of putting in money. It's because we tend to bring in a lot of resources for our entrepreneurs. That's in a nutshell of what we do. But I, I, and if, if people want to become investors in YY Ventures or give you money, <laughs> are the door open for that? <laughs> Um, we're still working on it because since last year we have received many requests um, and also we do not have a business development team so and we do not know much how do you actually write a proposal so we are not pretty strong in this in this game but there are people family foundations who whom we meet in conferences 
So we are now working on a um, social business fund concept, again, with support from the Obama Scholars Program and Columbia Business School. Hopefully, we will launch it very soon when actually foundations, philanthropic capitals um, can also invest with us in other companies. Cool. I mean, I, I had to write many proposals in my life and now I'm reviewing many proposals. So I'm, I'm happy to uh, help and have a look at it if, uh, if that's uh, of any help. And in terms of, um, so are you currently accept, accepting new ventures at YY uh, Ventures? So, uh, and if so, what are the minimum criteria? Like if I now would want to apply, what would I need to have in place to come to you? Yeah, sure. So over the years, we have learned a few things. So I, we opened this application cycle twice. Um, so the next cycle opens in December for Bangladesh, but we are also working on a program uh, with FAO and Nobel Peace Alliance for Food Security, a UNICEF project for Central African Republic. And I don't want to say right now, but because we are also working with colleagues um, to do something for early stage or idea stage um, enterprises globally that we're going to launch soon, maybe next month. But in Bangladesh, uh, we look for entrepreneurs who have started something four to six months old minimum, maybe 12 months maximum. They have at least one female co-founder or if they have one founder, female founder is good. Um, they particularly focus on you know, creating jobs, fighting carbon emission or reducing poverty. And then we have 12 different metrics and they can, it's pretty simple. They can apply in our website and then after, so typically we receive 100 plus applications and then we do a, um, a secondary judgment. We bring in up to 25, they, they come for an online or offline pitching. And then we choose about 10 to 12 entrepreneurs and we run the program uh, in partnership with the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. Um, yeah, and then other than this, we also support other development agencies. Um, for example, with UNDP, um, we did a project where we supported four entrepreneurs every six months who were promoting peace and tolerance in Bangladesh because communal harmony um, is a big um, challenge here. So we are also trying to address these kind of issues. Okay, cool, got it. And uh, the program then is being run, basically like the physical location is then the impact hub. So it kind right. of goes together. Right. And uh, so, I mean, uh, uh, first of all, uh, had tip uh, for opening the impact hub right before the pandemic. That's, <laughs> that's uh, of course very courageous. But it's even better that it's still expanded because that shows that people look for a place to connect them and bring their ideas. And uh, I have worked before I worked, uh, of course, in companies where we had an office. I also actually worked um, very briefly uh, at the German Berlin Impact Hub before they were getting really big. Um, and I can tell you, it's a great place, everyone. Check it out. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure what your visiting hours are, but it's just good to have a community around you of people that do the most diverse things. And you, no matter what question you have, you will right. find someone that you can ask. Right. It's just absolutely amazing. And I mean, they, they have a huge uh, international community. So it's really, really a good network to tap into. And again, like it takes some... Um, weight off your shoulders because you don't have to, and you sometimes find your co-founders there or you right. find team members there because they were like, oh, that's a cool thing what you're doing. Like, and I join and, and then you're like surprised, like, oh, people want to work for this thing that I thought is a crazy idea. So I can uh, only recommend everyone um, to go there. Um, I Maybe to switch gears a little bit, I a slightly philosophical question to you. <laughs> so since you've done all these different things now. Uh, I mean, you went from the academic sector to like community organizing. You actually had a lot of international exposure through the Obama network. You know, were involved with small ventures. Um, and this all started in like, you said, I think 2016. Yeah. Um, like going back um, these five years, like what are some of the things that you would tell your um, 2016 Shazib uh, that uh, you would like to have known then that you like that you know now. Yeah, that <laughs> entrepreneurship is lonely. 
<laughs> it's 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 hard and um also we have to i mean uh, we have to always ask for help and trust people you know often many things doesn't work out the way you plan but um i think i had the courage to to accept my failures you know so because i i remember in in one one of these events that unicenter hosts we we launched a social business uh, in partnership with a friend of mine to to promote art and culture in bangladesh in the digital space we had all these artists but nobody was paying for it so there was no market you know it was really really hard for me to accept failure um but we have to you know accept it another thing is i when i started why why ghosty i was also very anxious you know what will happen if i fail now my family will say oh he didn't listen to us my my friends will say you are such a shame you went for entrepreneurship but but you failed but i think somehow it it worked you know so um for for me i would say to ask for help more because i learned it over this last 6 years i think at the beginning i was a bit nervous to go to people and and talk to them about my concerns and issues um but uh, but this has a whole bright side you know bright side is if you really want to do something people will actually come and help you right you will always find your friends you will you will meet many other people from different cultures who are trying to do the same thing maybe in a different way so we also have to learn from this um and then i wish i was a better networker you no know? <laughs> yeah this, this but but networking this is learning by practice uh, right. i think very few people are born as natural networker it's not something that that comes to one naturally and just be out there and it but it's just it put yourself out of the comfort zone a few times and then at some point it just you you learn it like you know like walking it's natural and i think you you said one very very important thing which is super important to remember like don't don't be ashamed um of failures because what you see like in the news or like the successful entrepreneurs or like the big entrepreneurs that get funding you only see the success stories but trust me all of them have failed many times before <laughs> that's just uh, that's just not the story that is often being told but failure is nothing bad it's something that helps you basically to do things better the next time what is bad if you make the same mistakes over and over again that's not good <laughs> of course uh, that's something to be avoided but if you fail you have learned something you can reflect on okay like how can i avoid doing this how can i do it better next time and then the failure actually becomes another life lesson and you can build on more and more life lessons and the better you are and uh, as you also said like don't try to like it's important not to think that people will judge you like you don't have to be afraid of judgment because if you only do things that everyone agrees with then you will just do the absolute minimum and and something absolutely boring because if you don't slightly like get people anxious then it's not courageous enough so so it's okay if not everyone agrees uh, because your job is not to please everyone but to do things that other people are not doing so i think you said some very very important uh, points there so I, i can also tell you when i went into social entrepreneurship my parents also didn't give me a, a clap on the shoulder and said yeah great you quit your job that was a great idea but if they're now seeing uh, where it's going i i think they're quite happy and uh, try to just uh, like ask for help people are always happy to help don't hide your failures um because people will know that things are not going the right way so it's absolutely fine like and, and now that i'm on the other side of the table like on the funder side i always see that like people are afraid to tell you this hasn't worked well but it's fine because i don't expect things to to go well i know that they're not going to go well uh, but then at least we can help each other out together so we have still a few more minutes left and what i want to cover is another initiative that you that you are involved with um, which are the 30 clubs which i understand um 
are uh, especially for young people, um, but also self-organized. And I think when I read through the concept, it sounds like a very, very, um, a very exciting um, way to basically start your entrepreneurial journey and to get a community around you. So explain a little bit um, what it is and how people can get involved. Right, sure. So I also have the pleasure to be involved at the Trees at Global Center. I'll talk, um, talk more about the center a little later, but the Tree Zero Club is an initiative towards achieving the Nobel Peace Laureate Professor Mohamed Yunus's vision of creating a world of three zeros, zero net carbon emission, zero wealth concentration for ending poverty, and zero unemployment by unleashing entrepreneurship in all. So each club is basically five people. It's self-formed, self-contained mini club where members can self-choose tasks to play a role in creating a three zero world. And so each of these clubs, um, so they empower themselves by taking initiatives and by also connecting with other clubs. So the, the, the center where I also work, um, the Theresa Global Center is responsible for resolving all issues relating to clubs, circles, and networks. Um, it's a very new initiative um, launched only a few, few months ago, and we have many applications, and I encourage all my friends um, between the age of 12 to 35 years to check out 30.club and maybe create your club. Another thing is we also receive a lot of um, requests. Hey, I'm 36 years old. I cannot create a club. How do I get involved? They can become... 3Z support persons and, and help another club to grow. If you are an organization, a company, not-for-profit, a foundation, you want to offer internships, different opportunities, immersion programs to 3Z clubs, you can become a 3Z support organization. And also what we saw in the video uh, that there are um, 96 wild species across the world uh, they can also become affiliating institutions um, to support and guide uh, a, a three zero club. So our job at the Trees at Global Center um, is uh, to become a one-stop help center for all these clubs, support organizations, wild species, and facilitate networking. And we're also building a platform, which we're going to launch soon, um, where each club members basically can network. It's their own platform to do exchange. Imagine uh, what, for me, took many years to go to one young world and actually connect to other like-minded young people. They can do it now from their home. And also we have many clubs from many different countries already. For example, if a 3 club from um, Choctogram wants to network with a 3 club from Bangkok, easy. Uh, at this platform, they can make friends. Um, if somebody wants to create their own circle, like if Five Club wants to create a circle and then they want to focus on carbon emission, they can do it. You know, small little things. Um, for example, very recently, many of our clubs, they took an initiative to plant one tree. So many of them did it, including my colleagues at the Trees at Center. So it, it was really fascinating when everybody was sharing what they were doing for the world. That's great. So no matter what idea you have, like if you fall into that age group, go there because um, what this guy took five years to connect to different uh, people, you can do much faster. So uh, take this opportunity. Um, and then one last question before I uh, would like to hand it over again um, to the coordinator. Um, so, I mean, on the one hand, you have the young people uh, that come to the clubs, but is there anything else that you are looking for currently that for people that actually want to support the three zero club initiative as a whole, like like infrastructure, financial support, mentors? Like, is there anything else that uh, yeah people can help out with? I think I think we welcome everybody to to get connected. No. Um, um, Creating a 3-0 world is a daunting task. And then we need everybody to play a role, um, um, maybe by creating a 3-0 club or creating a circle, becoming a support organization, maybe investing in a social business that is created by the members of a particular 3-0 club. So I think opportunities are open and um, we receive a lot of um, requests and messages from many friends like academics, um, 
um, youth organizers, community organizers. And it's pretty simple. At our website, um, there are a couple of options through which people can actually write to us. And already many friends uh, from the Grameen um, and Yunus family of social business are already engaged, um, who are supporting the 30 Club initiative in their own way. Great, wonderful. So I uh, hope this will be growing very quickly. And I think, um, as you said, uh, it's very important that we create a 30 world because otherwise there is no world anymore. And the people that are gonna do it, these are not gonna be the very, very old people. <laughs> of course, we need them also, but it's the young people. It's the people that are listening here. It's your friends. So right. um, everybody get involved because um, you're the generation and we are the generation that can create the three zero world. And that's one way to get involved. You have a platform to connect. So um, I'll also check it out. I'll invite everyone to go there. And uh, with this being said, I would uh, like to talk to you for much, much longer, but I see we're running on a tight schedule. Um, so I would like to hand it over again uh, to the coordinator. And it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, Bastian. It's been an honor. Thank you so much. This has indeed been a great, great conversation. I think uh, wonderful to hear Shazib's story from, you know, the little office in Mirpur. I remember he used to come to Yunus Center on the 16th floor of the Grameen oh. Bank building, uh, you know, as students with his um, fellow other students. So, and to what his office is now in the other Grameen building with Impact Hub. Um, and so it's, a, I think it's been a remarkable, remarkable journey for him, but also for the people he also carries and brings along so maybe um you know other young people may not have not known where to go or to talk about social business or social issues but now there's a common ground i'm sure through his platform other people people who may not have had the resources could you know hear of you know you hear your friends say oh i applied for a scholarship at this university why don't you apply and then often you know the two can go to the okay. university so i think it's very similar for ideas and also funding opportunity which is very important for such startups of, for young people so i think uh, that's been a great great conversation and um, bastian thank you so much you really brought it out i think um uh, it really went like a story and I was just listening to the whole thing. So thank you very much to both our speaker and our moderator. So with that, we conclude our conversation today. But uh, before that, we'll play a slideshow on our upcoming events. We have our Social Business Academia Conference coming up in November, from November 4th to the 6th. Uh, it's going to be online, virtual, plus we have some arrangements with Mount Kenya University in uh, Kenya. So uh, the Social Business Academia Conference is there. And then we have the so Global Social Business Summit, which is also going to be gathering entrepreneurs and big names in the social business business world, social uh, business experts, etc. So I request all of you to check our social media page, Yunus Center, a page on Facebook and social business media, of course. So do check those pages out for our updates. And of course, join us for our upcoming events. So with that, uh, we conclude today's session. I request the IT team to play the slide. Bye for today. Bye.